Good morning. For those of you, I presume it's not all of you, but for those of you who are dragging this morning for whatever reason, we'll start this way. Shout. Let's stand. Shout to the north. Men of faith rise up and see of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak, in your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior. Rise up, women of the truth, stand and sing a broken heart, who can know the healing power of our awesome King of God. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all. By the power of his name, we fall in deeper in love with you. You burn the truth on our knees. Shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior. of church with broken wings fill this place with songs again of our God who reigns on high by his grace again we'll fly shout to the north and the south sing to the east and the west Jesus is Savior to And you may be seated. Welcome to worship. We're so thrilled we're here. Now, for our guests, I always say welcome to worship because I, I could say welcome to church. I could say good morning. I could say a lot of different things. Uh, you know, how about them, them balls? I could, you know, I mean, you could say all the, I'll never say that, by the way. All right. <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> uh, but I say welcome to worship for a reason. And that reason is that's why we walk in these doors. We walk in these doors to worship our Savior and King, Jesus Christ. We walk in these doors to worship the God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And everything we do is designed and geared to help you worship. And I hope that as you walked in these doors, that you walked in for, a, you may have walked in for a lot of reasons, but I hope you walk out having said, I worship today. 
Uh, if you're a guest with us, there's a connection card. If you haven't already filled one out, there's a connection card in the pew in front of you. And uh, we'd love to get a record of you having been here. And, and so that way we can follow up and send you all sorts of emails and, and call you every, one, every five minutes and ask you, <laughs> tell you we're trying to get a hold of you uh, for your, uh, about your warranty. Um, but no, we won't do that. But uh, if you would fill that out, that would be great. As we worship this morning, we're going to begin in prayer. And I want to, we do something uh, uh, as we pray. We have a few moments, what I call sacred silence, where it's just you and God. And you, you I, let, me con- let me ask you to confess before God. One of the things I pray every Sunday morning is, as, I, as I prepare, and, and, and a lot of other mornings, but uh, every Sunday morning for sure, God cleanse me that I may worship you. So let's pray that, and, and let's, let's spend a few moments with God, and then I'll, then I'll lead us in prayer. Pray with me. Lord, you are worthy of worship. You are worthy of praise. May all that we do glorify you this morning. God, I pray for your children who are here, for those who have put their trust in you through repentance and and faith. God, I pray that you would find us faithful to worship you. For those who don't know you, Father, for those who are uh, uh, maybe the skeptic or the person who's seeking you, I pray today that you would draw them to you this morning, that they would come to a saving faith, Father. God, may your Holy Spirit lead this worship. It's in the precious name of your son we pray. Amen. As we do each week, let me invite you to, as you are able, to stand and we'll continue singing. Come now, found of every blessing, my heart to sing thy grace. Strength of mercy never ceasing, call the song the loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious song, song by flaming tongues of Seal it, seal it for thy courts 
Revelation, the fourth chapter. After this I looked, and there in heaven was an open door. The first voice that I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven a throne was set. One was seated on the throne, and the one seated looked like jasper and cornelian stone. A rainbow that looked like an emerald surrounded the throne. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the throne sat 24 elders dressed in white clothes with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and thunder. Burning before the throne were seven fiery torches, which are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne was something like a sea of glass, similar to crystal. In the middle and around the throne were four living creatures, covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings, and they were covered with eyes around and inside. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Jesus, your name is power. 
breath and leaving water such marvelous mystery
I am usually singing so loud I can't hear anyone else sing. I, I, don't, I like to sing loud like that. Um, but, um, excuse me, pardon me. I didn't say well. I said loud. Uh, but um, when everyone was singing without the, without the music, and, and all the only instrument we had were the voices, were your voices, which is the best instrument in the world, by the way. The voices of the congregation of God singing. It doesn't matter how well you sing or uh, if, if uh, you, can, you can sing it all. Sing out because that is the most beautiful voice. We have someone here who knows how well I sing, probably better than anyone else. Um, my younger brother is with us. He and his wife. Uh, I, I guess I could also say my little brother because, uh, you know, he is shorter. I, I am still taller, smart, smarter, and better looking than he is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Randall, my younger brother Randall, and uh, his wife Tammy came to be with us today, and so I'm under extra pressure um, because he is also a pastor or, and uh, uh, a, a preacher, and so I've got that extra pressure this morning. Uh, but uh, if you'll turn with me to e Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to finish Ephesians today. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to read the part that I'm going to be preaching on. You can follow along if you have. It's on the screen. Um, but then I'm going to read the final greeting also that will not be on the screen uh, just to finish up all of Ephesians. We'll not be talking about the final greeting. We're going to be concentrating this morning on the, how we are spiritual warriors. We're, we're continuing uh, that whole armor of God passage that we, where we concentrate on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation and, and such. But we've, we've made a trilogy out of it, if you will, uh, where we talked about how we have, we identified the struggle that we have, the warfare that we are in, and we identified that battle, and then how God has prepared us for the battle, and now we're looking at the power for the struggle uh, as we look at prayer this morning. So Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to begin in verse 18, and uh, I'm going to read through the end of the chapter, but uh, we're going to concentrate on verses 18 through 20. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 18. And uh, if, you're fi if you have your uh, CSB, because that's what I normally preach out of, I'm using the ESV, the uh, English Standard Version, this morning, uh, because this translation uh, does a, be a little bit better job on, on a couple of the translations So, uh, in, this, in this particular passage. Beginning in verse 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in the opening of my mouth, to me in opening my mouth to boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So that you may also know how I am and what I am doing, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister to in the Lord, will tell you everything. And I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to all, with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Father, pray, uh, pray with me. Father, thank you for your word, for your word is truth. And so, Lord, as we open your word and we look at prayer, help us to be people of prayer. Help us to be a people who turn to you first and not, not when we've exhausted ourselves. Help us, Father, to see the power for the struggle. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 1678, John Bunyan, not Paul Bunyan, no, no babe blue ox here. John Bunyan was a Baptist preacher who was imprisoned in England because he was preaching a different doctrine than the Church of England would have him preach. 
He was in prison, and he writes this story. He writes this, this allegory of the Christian life called A Pilgrim's Progress. Has anybody read A Pilgrim's Progress? We have a few people who've read A Pilgrim's Progress. Great. Um, or seen the movie, maybe? Okay. Uh, I may show the movie because it's getting people to watch the movie is a whole lot easier than getting them to read it. Um, but in the story, he recounts the story, the journey of a man named Christian. Christian uh, is on a journey. He meets uh, another man named Evangelist who tells him about a, a celestial city. And he tells him about a, a hill, uh, a mountain on it, uh, a mountain with, with a cross on it and where he can in, uh, lose his burden. And so Christian is on his journey from his home in the city of destruction to this celestial city. And on that journey, he meets different people and, and different places. He, and in one place, he finds he's shown an armory. And in that armory, they find this armor to keep him safe for the journey. And, and the story says the next day, they took him and had him into the army where they showed him all manner of furniture which their Lord had provided for pilgrims, as sword and shield and helmet and breastplate, all prayer and strength shoes that would not wear out. Now, we've already looked at all those other pieces of the armor. We've looked at the breastplate, the helmet, the shield, the sword. We've looked at all of that, the shoes with the preparation for the gospel of peace. But what about the one that Bunyan called all prayer? That's an interesting weapon, all prayer. Uh, further on in his journey, Bunyan tells the story of Christian going through the, in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death. And in the middle of the valley, he finds a place he calls the mouth of hell. And Bunyan describes it like this. Ever and anon, this is 1678, ever and anon, the flame and smoke would come out in such abundance with sparks and hideous noises, things that cared not for Christian sword, as did Ap Apollyon before him, before that he was forced to put up his sword and betake himself to another weapon called all prayer. Bunyan tells us that when Christian wielded all prayer, the weapon, the, the fiends of hell gave back and came no further. You know, what a weapon this all prayer must be when, when the sword of God wasn't enough. The sword of the word of God wasn't enough. This all prayer, Christian breaks out all prayer, and when he wields that mighty weapon, the demons of hell all tremble. You know, prayer is, is that final and mightiest weapon in our, in our armor, as we, in our battle, our spiritual battle, that we are battling uh, Satan. And trust me, we, we, in the West, we don't give Satan enough. A lot of times we don't give him enough credit. But through prayer, we're both, uh, prayer is the final and mightiest weapon in our order. It's through prayer that we both communicate with command, with God, and our needs are known, and we're battling our spiritual battle. So, Jesus did battle in prayer. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed so hard that Luke's gospel tells us that sweat flowed from him like droplets of blood. And he prayed, and he, he battled the desire to escape what was to come. He said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. And he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Luke goes on to tell us that as he, as he prayed that battle, and he prayed that there were ministering angels that came to him to minister to Jesus as he prayed and to strengthen him. You know, Paul concludes this, this letter to Ephesus with, by pointing the readers and hearers to all prayer. You know, throughout Ephesus, he's given us some of the greatest theology uh, of Scripture. He tells us that without Christ, we are dead in our trespasses and sins. We're not sick, we're dead, he says. He, he tells us that the church should be one and how, how it should be one. He does all of this. He, he, he shows us all of this. He tells us how our families, how our marriage, 
is to model Christ. He tells us what our church should look like and our marriage and our families and our work life should all look like. And he wraps it up in prayer because he knows that only through prayer, only through prayer, will we find the strength to live as Christ would have us live. Now let's look at God's word. Let's look closely at those three verses, 18 through 20, and see how we can use this powerful weapon called all prayer. Well, why is it called all prayer? Because Paul, the very first thing he tells us to do is pray comprehensively. Pray comprehensively. Paul doesn't just say pray. He says pray comprehensively. In verse 18, he uses the word all four times, saying how we should pray. And this is why John Bunyan called this all prayer, because this is for all. So let's see those four th- ways that we are to pray. And 1 Thessalonians, though, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul writes to the Thess- uh, church in Thessalonica. My mouth is not moving this morning. Uh, he writes to the church in Thessalonica. He says, pray without ceasing. This isn't the same thing, but this is, this is the companion to that statement. If we're to pray without ceasing, it says that our prayer should be lived, our prayer life should be lived in such a way it's like our breathing. How many of you, when you walk into a situation, the very first thing is you, as you inhale and exhale, breathe out a prayer. That's praying without ceasing. Verse 18 is the companion to that verse, and, and, and prayer should be natural, and the practice should be, uh, uh, should be natural in our lives. The subjects of our prayer should be comprehensive. Well, let's see what he means. The first thing he says, pray at all times. Pray at all times. And I'm going to confess something to you. It's probably been as much a detriment to my ministry here as anything. I'm a doer. I am a doer. I live in the practical. That, that's one of the, I've always been that, that practical guy. Um, living in the practical. I like the concrete. When I was uh, doing uh, engineering programming, it was the practical that, that I was able to understand. When I was studying mathematics, it was the practical application that helped me get through. I love the practical. And when I see a problem to be solved, I'm immediately going to start trying to solve it. That drives my wife nuts. And, and husbands, I'm not alone. It drives your wives nuts too. They tell you that there's a problem. They're not looking for you to solve it. If you're a doer like me, they're looking for you to journey with them in that problem. But anyway, I, I digress. A little, little extra for you, no charge. When I have a sermon lesson to prepare, I immediately begin studying for it and preparing. And when there's an issue at church, I immediately start looking at how to solve that issue. You see my problem? I've left out the most important weapon in my arsenal, prayer. Now, here's the thing. I don't think I'm alone in this. I don't think I'm alone in this. And I don't think it's a guy thing. I think it's an all of us thing. And prayer is a spiritual discipline. And a discipline is something that you have to learn through practice. It's one of those things that that doesn't come naturally. You know why it doesn't come naturally? Because it's spiritual. And so we have to tap into that. We have to to practice the, the praying at all times. Praying at all times. So what's that look like? It means we would start our day out in prayer. We, we pray before we tackle problems in our lives. We pray when we're blessed. We pray when we hear of a tragedy or we ha- uh, around the world. It means we pray when we end our day. It means when you hear that ambulance go by, you breathe a prayer for whoever it is they're going to go see. It means when 
You pass that wreck on the road. You breathe a prayer for those who are in that wreck. It means when you watch the news, you pray for the world. It mean, do you understand what it means? All times is comprehensive. It doesn't mean some of the time. It means all times. Pray at all times. But God doesn't just tell us to pray at all times. He says pray at all times in the Spirit. Pray at all times in the Spirit. Now, many people, when they think of praying in the Spirit, they think of our more Pentecostal brothers and sisters who, who pray in a special language. They call that praying in the Spirit. That's not what Paul's saying. That's not what Paul's saying at all. He's talking about how praying that God's Spirit would aid, he's talking about how God's Spirit aids our prayers. Now, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we, it's, it's a different, um, most people, uh, I've heard um, one guy wrote a book called The Forgotten God, and, and we, we forget about the Holy Spirit. You know, we, have, we pray to the Father, we, we're thankful for the Son who died on the cross, but we really don't understand the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Here are three ways that the Holy Spirit aids our prayers. Number one, God's Spirit directs our prayers. He lays needs on our hearts and minds that we may not even have considered when we begin to pray. Have you ever started to pray and, and, you st and, and you're praying and all of a sudden your mind starts to wander and you're thinking about, I don't know, work or thinking about something else? At that moment, pray a prayer for whatever it is you're thinking about. Maybe it's work. God, help me to be a witness at work. Maybe it's, it's you know, what you're going to be doing uh, when, when you finish. God, help me to, to do what needs to be done. You know, and, and you'll find that the Spirit is starting to direct your, direct your mind in prayer. I, I'm bad. A lot of pastors, a lot of people have a prayer list that they put in front of them, and, and they, they just go down that list. I'm, I'm a doer, not a writer. And so I don't have that list in front of me a lot of times, and I'll be praying, and, and, and I'll start praying, and all of a sudden one of your names comes to my mind, and I'll pray for you at that moment. You let the Holy Spirit lead your prayer life. He lays needs on your hearts and minds that you may not have even considered when you began to pray. He shows us how to pray for and submit to God's will about certain situations. Have you ever had this happen to you? You had an issue with a person, and you take that issue to God in prayer. You begin by asking God to change that person. Around to your way of thinking, but in the middle of it, you start changing yourself. And God has shown you you need to make the changes in your relationship. That's a spirit directed prayer, that's praying in the spirit. Finally, when we have those prayer issues where we just don't know how to pray. That, that issue that just takes you and breaks you. And, and you pray and you pray and you pray until you've got nothing else to pray. Listen to what God's Word says about that. Likewise, the Spirit helps our, us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit helps us when we pray. So he says, pray at all times with all prayer and supplication. With all prayer and supplication. Now, prayer has many different components. 
A proper prayer has many different components. Uh, and, and our prayer life, when we pray, we often spend all of our time on one of those components, the prayer requests or the supplication. And we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to be praying for each other. And I hope that you are praying for each other. And, and many of you will tell me, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I pray for you every day. I am so thankful for that. And that is the only thing that, that, that builds me up and, and it helps keep me going. And I am so thankful. And I just want to say thank you to that. But we, we pray for other people. You know, we have prayer prayer meeting and we've got this prayer list and this prayer list is a full eight and a half by 11 sheet filled full that I have to every once in a while try to scrunch up whenever I'm trying to do it because we've got so many prayer requests on that list and so we pray about that but there's other things that have to do with prayer and if we're going to do all prayer, we must do these. Now, there are different ways that we teach prayer. And I'm going to teach you one real quick. It's called the PRAY acronym. The PRAY acronym. P-R-A-Y. And, and you might want to write this down. There's a, an offering envelope in front of you. Uh, and you might want to write this down even if you don't take notes. P, praise. P, praise. We spend time praising God, praising him. You know, it doesn't make God feel better when we praise him. We don't do that because he is a narcissistic God that needs our praise. He knows that when we praise, it reminds us of who he is. When we're praising him for who he is, it reminds us of who he is. It reminds us that we have a big God who can handle anything. So we praise him. R is repent. It's repent. This is a time of coming clean before God through confession of godly sorrow for and asking forgiveness for and turning from your sin. We repent. Well, I did that when I was saved. Yes, you did. But we have to do the same thing as Christians when we pray. We repent. Number three is ask. A, ask. These are the requests, the supplications that uh, you make for yourself and others. Now, here's the one that everyone has a problem with. Why? Yield. Yield. You know, when Jesus asked if the cup... You know, if it's the Father's will, the cup of the crucifixion should be, should be taken from him. Uh, nevertheless, he said, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus, in his model prayer, tells us that we should pray. Uh, uh, I got to get to it. It's not in my notes. Um, the, uh, it, that we should pray, thy will be done on, uh, on the earth as it is in heaven. You know, when we say on earth as it is in heaven, we're not talking about thy will be done in the, in the government or what it's in my heart. We, sh we should have the same attitude when we pray. We should yield our hearts and, and our whole selves to God's will through prayer. So praise, repent, ask, yield, P-R-A-Y. That's how we should pray. That's a good way to pray when we pray. So it says, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication to the end keep alert with all perseverance. There's a third all, all perseverance. Someone once described perseverance as stick to itiveness. Stick to itiveness. It just means we stay with it. We, we, we keep alert. He says, keep alert with all perseverance. We should continually watch and pray. Watch and pray. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us how we should be persistent in our prayers. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Literally translated, those commands would be keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. 
Each step in that ask, seek, knock command is progressively more active than the previous step. We should persistently ask God the things for the things that God lays on our heart. We should persistently seek God's character. This is the seek. Seek God's character for reasons that God has not answered our requests. We may find that we're at what we're asking for doesn't align with God's will and God's character. And so we need to ask for something else. We may also find that our, we're not aligned with God's character and God's will. And we need to change something about ourselves before God will grant us our prayer. And we should persistently knock at the door of prayer when our prayers aren't answered. You know, knocking denotes a seriousness in prayer. Jesus told the parable of the man who he was, he was in bed at night and his neighbor comes knocking at the door at midnight. And, you know, I don't know about you, I'm, I'm a heavy enough sleeper that uh, isn't going to wake me. You got to pound that door. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Because he had no food for visitors. And he kept banging at the door until his friend woke. And he banged at the door and showed, his banging at the door showed the seriousness of need. And Jesus said, this is how we should pray. We should pray with seriousness of need. Listen, if you have a friend who doesn't know Jesus, if you have a lost friend, a lost family member, you need to be asking, you need to be seeking, but you really need to be knocking. Because this is important. Never giving up. Never give up. Never, never, never give up. And he says, praying all the time in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication, with all perseverance, and making supplication for all the saints. So who are you praying for? Who are you praying for? Too often we pray for me and mine. I, one of the things that, that, and if you post this, you're about to find out how your pastor feels about it. A lot, I see a lot of Christians post, God bless me and mine. God bless me and mine. Take care, bless me and my family. As if that's all that there is in the world. All that God loves it's okay, but it's not nearly enough. It's not nearly enough. We need to be praying for all the saints of our church. We need to be praying for those working in other churches that God would increase their flock. We need to be praying for those who are not currently in church that they would find a church that God has for them. We need to be praying for believers in other countries where Christianity is struggling. We need to be praying for the persecuted Christians around the world. We need to be praying for the missionaries and church planters and seeking to plant churches where there is currently no gospel witness. You know, after telling us to pray comprehensively, God has, I mean, Paul has a couple of personal requests. This is, this is Paul saying, pray for me. And these are requests that we should all pray for each other to have. And we should ask people to pray for us. Paul says in verse 19, he says, And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. He wanted opportunity to proclaim the gospel. He's praying for opportunity for the gospel. Paul wrote this letter from prison. He was in prison for sharing the gospel. And you would think that he wouldn't even consider sharing the gospel to those in prison. But that's what it's like when you're in the prison for sharing the gospel. The Chinese church, the pastor, uh, one man went and he talked to the, he's talking with them. And these pastors says, uh, said, you know, you have seminary. 
we have prison. Prison is our seminary. You're not really a pastor unless you've gone to prison for sharing the gospel. Think about that. Yet he asked that opportunity and words would be provided that he could share the gospel. You know, we have a world that's becoming more antagonistic to the gospel, and it seems impossible to share the gospel in the workplace, and impossible to share the gospel in school, and impossible to share the gospel in social media. But the answer is to ask others to join you in praying that you would be given opportunity to share the gospel, and then look for that opportunity to share the gospel. Let me tell you a great opportunity that is before you right now. There's this movie out, Jesus Revolution, and here's what you need to do. You need to go see it. But don't just go see it. Take a lost friend with you. Hey, there's this great movie. It's about the hippie movement back in the 70s and 60s. It's really a good movie, uh, it, and you need to come see it with me. Take them with you. And then you have the opportunity to share the gospel because the gospel is presented in that movie clearer than any movie that I've seen in the last 20 years. You need to see. There's your opportunity. But ask God to provide you other opportunities to share the gospel. And then pray for boldness to share the gospel. And he says, for which I am an ambassador, change that I may declare it boldly. Pray for boldly as I ought to speak. Paul asked that the church in Ephesus pray for boldness to share the gospel. You know, when you think of Paul, you don't think of someone who needs boldness because, or who lacks boldness. And yet here he is asking for boldness. And if Paul can ask for boldness, we need to also. You know, often opportunities arise that, to share the gospel and we don't do it because we lack boldness. We're afraid to share the gospel. We're afraid of what people will think about us. We're afraid of that we'll be laughed at. We're afraid we're going to make a mistake. We're afraid of this or that. You're in the middle of a spiritual battle if you're afraid. Let me tell you, you're in the middle of a spiritual battle. That is Satan knocking you down so that you don't share the gospel. And you need all prayer at that moment. And so you need to pray for boldness. Here's my challenge to you. Pray for yourselves and for each other and for me because that I described me at different times. That we would have both opportunity and boldness to share the gospel. All prayer is the power to our spiritual battles. John Piper wrote, we cannot know what prayer is for until we know that life is war. Life is war. That's not all it is, but it is certainly that. Our weakness in prayer is owing largely to our neglect of this truth. It's easy to neglect prayer when you wake up and grab your phone to check mail or social media before you get up. Once you're there, once up, there are kids and chores to do and news to check. Before you know it, it's bedtime and you haven't prayed. But now you too are too tired to pray. John Piper also wrote, unless I'm badly mistaken, one of the main reasons so many of God's children don't have a significant life of prayer is not so much that we don't want to, but that we don't plan to. It's all part of the enemy's tactics to keep you from praying, to keep you from communicating with the Father, to keep you out of the battle. Try this with me. Begin your day in the word. If the first thing you do is grab your phone and read, don't check your mail. Put an app on here with the Bible on it and go to that. Take five minutes to read the word and pray. Then as you go through your day, take the opportunity to pray. Carve out time to pray where you're concentrating on prayer alone. And as you pray, pray for me and others of your brothers and sisters that we have opportunity to sh and boldness to share the gospel. And there are many problems in this world, and, and, but there's only one solution. 
And that's the good news of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. You see, we are all sinners. We all live in rebellion to God. It doesn't matter how good you are or how evil you are. You're all, we're all sinners living in rebellion to God. But Jesus came and died for us. Not so that we would automatically become saints. Because that's not the way it works. It says those who have faith. Jesus said, repent and believe in the good news. Repentance and faith is Jesus' only solution to the sin that stains the world. And that happens one person at a time. And imagine what it would be like if you told somebody and you told somebody and I told somebody about Jesus, and they came to Christ. Maybe that person that needs, that's been living in rebellion is you. Maybe your rebellion has looked more like apathy. I haven't really considered that. I haven't really considered what it, you know, in my life, what it looks, it would look like in my if you've lived that life of rebellion or apathy toward God, he calls that sin, and you've got to repent of that sin. If you've never repented of your sin and put your trust in him, I invite you to do it today. The altar is going to be open here in a minute. It's open now, actually. I'll be standing down front. I'll be glad to pray with you. The altar is open. And maybe you have a prayer need that God has laid on your heart. Now's the time to come. As we worship, there's this time of worship. We worship through song. We worship through the reading of the word. We worship through, through uh, the teaching of the word. We worship through giving. But there's this one moment in our worship where we worship through commitment, where we worship through presenting ourselves before God which is, our, which is our act of worship, and that's this moment right now. And this moment is holy. We're going to pray, and then we're going to sing. Won't you come? Won't you come? Father, thank you for prayer. Thank you that we can battle on our knees, that we can, that we can bring our needs before you, that we can, Father, that we can pray for each other, that we can pray for those who don't know you. And God, help us to be faithful and to have opportunity and boldness to share the gospel. But right now, Father, I pray for those who don't know you. That today, that right now, your Holy Spirit is working and drawing them to you. That they would come to know your saving grace. God, I pray for your children, for my believing brothers and sisters. Help us, Father, to battle better with all prayer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we stand, let's sing, I am resolved. Won't you come? I am resolved no longer to linger charmed by the world's delight things that are higher things that are nobler these have allured my sight i hasten to him hasten so glad and free jesus greatest highest i will Resolve to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life.
Thank you. If you'll be seated, I want to share a couple things that are happening in the life of the church. It is that time of year again. It's time for Little Debbie Cakes. Uh, we're having the uh, Ridgetop Station is having their Easter egg hunt on uh, April 2nd, and they've invited us to come and bring our Little Debbie Cakes of all kinds. And we're going to be inviting people to come and be a part of our Easter in the Park, which is on the 9th. So April Sunday, April 2nd, we're going to uh, be handing out the Little Debbie Cakes. So beginning Wednesday night, next Sunday, tomorrow, whenever you can get them here, we need Little Debbie Cakes that we can hand out. They have uh, several hundred people coming to this Easter egg hunt every year. So that will be on April 2nd, 2 p.m. And uh, all kinds of Little Debbie Cakes. I love the oatmeal cream pie, in case anyone wonders. Um, and then at 10 a.m. on April 9th, we're having Easter in the Park. And, and if you've not been a part of that, it is, it is a very special time. We will be in front of the uh, Wilson House uh, at um, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, we'll have an outs outdoor service. I want you to invite your, your family, your friends, your neighbors, especially the lost ones, as they come and hear the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the only announcements I have right now. We've got a few more that are coming. There will be no, uh, no kite day today. The weather just isn't going to cooperate. So we'll reschedule that at a later date, probably sometime next month. Is that right? Okay. I just want to read as our benediction today and instead of closing, I want to read again this last couple of verses of Ephesians chapter 6. If you'll stand with me. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all, with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ, with love incorruptible. This is God's word. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may leave. <laughs> I could say be dismissed, but that means the same thing. <laughs>